applications with rational functions. When we have rational functions, we often have different kinds of applications where we have maybe unusual numbers or situations. Here is a business application. The cost-benefit function, C, computes the cost in millions of dollars of implementing a city recycling project when X percent of the citizens participate. So the cost is our output of our function. C is our output. That represents the cost in millions of dollars. And the X represents what percent of the population are uh, participating in the project. So first we want to evaluate C of 75, which means we're simply going to use it 75 in place of the X. So C of 75 is 1.2 times 75 over 100 minus 75. Now let me take my calculator that is a fairly easy thing to calculate here. I can do the 1.2 times 75 which gives me 90 in the numerator divided by 25 is 3.6. Now I also could have gone to my y equals screen and put my function in there. My function, remember, is 1.2 x divided by, since there's more than one term in the denominator, I need to enclose it in parentheses. 100 minus x in parentheses. I could go to my table, second graph, and look for a value of 75. Now, I could scroll for a long time before I found 75. A function that will make it easier is if you put your calculator in ask mode. Do second window, and you see table set up. Move your cursor down to where it's highlighted on independent ask and press enter. Now do second graph to go to your table. And you can put in any value you want for x. If I were going to have to do this problem for, and find the value at several different x values, this would be a very efficient way to do it. I can put in any numbers I want. If 75% of the people participate, I get 3.6, which means $3.6 million is what it would cost to implement it, and 75% of the people would be participating. If only 25% of the people participate, the cost would only be point four million dollars or four hundred thousand dollars. So I can put any number if I want to see what ninety percent. If ninety percent of the people participate, it's going to cost ten point eight million dollars. Okay. Now let's see, let's go on to the next question. If the city plans to spend five million dollars on the project, how many can they expect to participate? Okay, so this time, the number that we know is how much they're going to spend on the project. So that's the cost. That's the C of X. So what we actually have for this equation is 5 equals 1.2X over 100 minus X. And you could solve this by hand or you could solve it graphically. 
I've already got the function in my calculator. Let me go to my y equals screen now and go to y2 and just put in a value of 5 because I want to know when the cost is 5. Now I'm going to have to adjust my window here because remember my x values are the percentages of people that participate. So the only numbers that x could be are from 0 to 100. So I'm going to let each tick mark there be 10 units. Now, let's look at the graph. There's the cost function and there's my line y equals 5. So I can very easily find the intersection. Remember second trace and then go over close to the intersection and as long as you stay close just keep pressing enter. They could expect to get 80 point six if you round to the nearest tenth percent of the people to participate in the recycling program. Now if you notice on this graph, as I look at it here, the closer you get to a hundred percent, the steeper that graph gets. So at some point it's going to cost a lot more to get more people involved. Now here's another application dealing with wait time. A parking garage attendant can wait on 40 cars per hour. If cars arrive randomly at a rate of X cars per hour, then the average number of cars that are waiting in line is given by this function. X squared over 1600 minus 40X. Now here this function is only going to be valid for a domain of between 0 and 40 cars per hour. Okay? Otherwise we'd be getting values that won't make sense. What we want to do is evaluate and interpret F of 25. So if I put in an, a value of 25 for my X, I'm going to have 25 squared over 1600 minus 40 times 25. Now, I did the last problem in the calculator by doing it in two steps. Remember, you also could evaluate this in the calculator in one step by enclosing your denominator in parentheses. So I can do 25 squared divided by parentheses 16 100 minus 40 times 25. And this gives me 1.04. Which means if 25 cars arrive per hour, the average wait time, wait, average number of cars waiting is 1.04 or about one car. I'm just curious to see what happens here if we graph this one. Here my function is x squared divided by parentheses 1600 minus 40x. Now here again, let's fix our window. The x we said on this problem can only go from 0 to 40. And the y's will be the number of cars in line waiting. So I know my y won't be negative. Let me start my y at 0 and see what I get here. Well, it goes up pretty steep here. So if I want to go all the way out to 40, I'm going to have to have a much higher window. 
Let me go up to 40 on my window. Oops. Now I can see there's not many cars in line here. If not many cars are arriving, there's not many cars in line. But once I get here, the number of cars in line gets pretty steep. 